Welcome to a video taking a look at iteration. Here we're going to go through two exam questions on iteration and we're going to start with this one here. We're asked to show that the equation x cubed plus 4x equals 1 has a solution between x equals 0 and x equals 1. There's a couple of ways that we can do this but what we're going to do to answer this question is we're going to use a trial improvement method to show that there must be that x must have a solution between 0 and 1. And the way that we do that is we simply substitute in x equals 0 into this equation. And then we're also going to substitute x equals 1 into this equation. Now, if there is a solution between 0 and 1, what we would expect is that for one of our values to give us an answer that is too small and the other value to give us an answer that is too big. And then if there is if that is the case, then that means that there must be an answer between those two values. So let's just check that. If I substitute x equals 0 into x cubed plus 4x, I'm going to get 0 cubed plus 4 times 0. And that's going to give me an answer of 0. And my answer that I'm, I'm expecting to, or that I want to be able to achieve, is 1. So this must be too small. It's too small because when I substitute in x as 0, it gives me 0, and that is less than 1. When I substitute in x equals 1, that's going to give me 1 cubed plus 4 times 1, and that's going to give me an answer of 5. And so that is too large. So what I can then say, and what what I need to say on these exam style questions, I mean, then after showing this working, is I just need to say that therefore x has a solution, uh, x has a solution between 0 and 1. So x has a solution between 0 and 1. Okay, so on to part B, we're asked to show that the equation x cubed plus 4x equals 1 can be arranged to give x equals 1 quarter minus x cubed over 4. So in order to do this, all that I'm really doing is a little bit of rearranging. And so at the moment I've got x cubed plus 4x equals 1 and I want it to be x on its own. So the, the way in which this is going to happen is I'm just going to bring this x cubed over to the other side of the equal sign by subtracting x cubed from both sides. So that leaves me with 4x is equal to 1 minus x cubed. Then all that's left for me to do to leave me with just x on its own, at the moment I've got 4x equals 1 minus x cubed, which means that x must be equal to, so dividing both sides by 4, 1 minus x cubed over 4. Now, when you see that, you may, may think, well, hold on, it asks us to make it look as 1 quarter minus x cubed over 4. But this is simply the same. We're just saying that 1 quarter minus x cubed over 4, that is exactly the same because if uh, two fractions share the same denominator, we can just write the sum or, of their uh, numerators on the top of the fraction. So 1 minus x cubed over 4 is exactly the same as 1 quarter minus x cubed over 4. Okay, part C. It asks us to start with x sub naught. So this uh, we call this x subscript naught or just x naught uh, is equal to zero. Use the iteration formula x n plus one equals one quarter minus x n cubed over four twice to find an estimate for the solution x cubed plus four x equals one. So it sounds quite complicated and, and this formula looks complicated as well, but it, it isn't really. So the idea of this is simply that to find the next term in the sequence, or the next the next term, or the n plus 1 term, I simply substitute the term before into the formula. So don't worry if that didn't quite make sense. Just if you watch this, it will make sense once we demonstrate. 
So we're told that x naught equals 0. What I can then say is that x naught plus 1, or I can just say basically the next term, will be equal to 1 quarter minus xn, so the term before cubed over 4. So 0 cubed over 4. I can then say, it asked me to do this twice, so I've done it once. Okay, so 1 quarter minus 0 cubed over 4, well 1 quarter, that's just going to leave me with 1 quarter. Then, I can work out x2. And again, the way that I do this is I take the value of the term before and substitute it into this formula. So x2 is going to be created, uh, is going to be found and calculated by saying 1 quarter minus, and then we're going to substitute in our value from the term before. So 1 quarter minus 1 quarter cubed divided by 4. And so for this part I'm going to need a calculator. So let's just do that. I'm going to have uh, 1 quarter uh, minus and then I want um, 1 quarter cubed uh, we've got a cube, yeah, a cube button. Uh, then so one quarter cubed divided by four. And so this gives me an answer of 63 over 256, or um, we'll say that this is, we'll write it as a decimal, 0 0.2460937. 0 0.2460937. I'll check that in a second. Um, 0.375. Okay, and that's it. Now these questions are worth quite a lot of marks on your exam. This would have been, the first part would have been worth two, this part would have been worth one, possibly two, and then this last part would have been worth three marks. So these are worth anywhere up to between six and seven marks, these questions. Let's take a look at a second example, and what I would recommend that you do now is that you pause the video, uh, attempt the question first, and then see, uh, then press play to see whether you got the question right. Okay, so for part A, again, we're asked to show that x cubed plus 7x equals 10 has a solution between 1 and 2. So we're going to substitute in x equals 1, x equals 2, and show that one of them is too large and one of them is too uh, small. So x equals 1 gives me 1 cubed plus uh, 7 times 1, and that is going to give me an answer of 8. When x equals 2, I'm going to say that that is, um, uh, so 2 cubed plus 7 times 2, and that's going to give me 8 plus 14, which is going to give me 22. So I can see when x equals 1, that is too small, and when x is 2, that's too large. And then for your exam, you must then write a statement as well, just saying that, therefore, x has a solution between 1 and 2. I'm not going to do that here, just to save a bit of time. OK, uh, part b. For part b, I'm asked to show that x cubed plus 7x equals 10 can be written as x equals 10 minus x cubed over 7. So starting off with this, we're going to start by subtracting x cubed from both sides, and that's going to give me 7x equals 10 minus x cubed. Then I'm simply going to divide by 7, so x equals 10 minus x cubed over 7. Now for part c. Starting with x0 equals 1, Use the iteration formula xn plus 1 equals 10 minus xn cubed divided by 7 four times to find an estimate to the solution of x cubed plus 7x equals 10. So we're starting this time with x naught is equal to 1. And again, we're using that same idea whereby to get the next term in this iteration, 
we simply substitute the term before into our iteration formula. So we are going to find x1 by doing 10 minus, and then it is going to be the term before, so x0, 1 cubed, divided by 7. Then to get my next term after that, x2, I'm simply going to take my answer to x1, and we'll work that out in a moment, and substitute it in again into the formula. So it will be 10 minus whatever this turns out to be cubed divided by 7. Now, when we have to do it a number of times, and in this, and in this case we've got to do it uh, four times, so x1, x2, x3, and x4, Okay, when we have to do it a number of times, there is a nice little trick on our calculator that we can do here, and it's by using our answer button. So, what I'm going to do here is my first number is 1, so I'm just going to press 1 and then press equals. Then, what I'm saying here is that every time I'm taking, I'm substituting into the formula 10 minus the answer before, and so I just press uh, 1 equals on my calculator. Let's do that again. And now when I press answer, it gives me the value that I had from when I pressed equals before. And so it gives me an answer of 1. So if I now substitute in, instead of substituting in 1 cubed, if I substitute in answer cubed, I can then just keep pressing equals because it will substitute in the next value. And I'll demonstrate that now because um, obviously that quite a complicated idea to explain verbally, but hopefully you'll understand as we go. So we've got answer in our memory, answer is 1, and I'm going to substitute this into the formula 10 minus the answer cubed divided by 7. And when I do this, that gives me 9 over 7, which is 1.285714. So one point. Two eight five seven one four. Now, obviously, obviously, that's going to be tricky to then substitute into this formula again, because really, what I want to be doing is ten minus one point two eight five seven one four recurring. cubed, and then divided by 7. And I'll keep doing that, and I'll keep doing that. And obviously, it's going to get more difficult the, the longer you go on. But what I've just done, though, is I've said it's 10 minus the answer cubed divided by 7. Now, originally, my answer was 1. But now I've just pressed equals. My new answer is 1.285714. And so I'm ready to just press equals again. When I press equals again, that is going to give me x2. So x2 gives me 1.249. So 1.249. Was that 1.249? 1.1249, uh, sorry. 1.1249. If I then press equals again, that is going to give me x3, because my new answer is 1.2494738. And that's already there, ready to be substituted in. So it gives me my x3 is 1.2254738. Uh, uh, so we'll give all of these to four decimal places. And then to get x4, my final answer, 1.1658. 1 1.1658. 1 so my final answer to part C is going to be one point. 1658 and that's to four decimal places uh, usually it will tell you um, or it might tell you to round it to two significant figures or uh, sorry two decimal places or perhaps three significant figures um, but what I would recommend if it doesn't say anything is just to write out the whole answer that is in your calculator